the big German premium sedan test, Audi A4 versus BMW 3 Series versus Mercedes C-Class. Who will be the winner or who is a specialist in which segment or in which discipline? We'll find out here with Thomas and Audio for you in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go. And the A4 would be somewhat the oldest model here in the test. Facelifted, meanwhile, has here this Quattro Citation here in the top. The typical Audi single frame grille here also blacked out. You can go for this option, but you don't have to. And a very interesting district green color for today. Whereas we have the Melbourne Red with the BMW 3 Series. So it's an Audi A4. 45 TSI versus a 330i. We have all comparable engine versions and all with all-wheel drive today. Here with the M Sport Pack and then you can also opt for an extended channel line that you also get the kidney in all the way in the black style. But again, you don't have to go for this one. With the Mercedes C-Class, you can also take a look how the AMG line looks like. Then you have this micro star pattern actually in the front. The avant-garde line looks a little bit more subtle, but this new generation has the thing that even the base or the avant-garde line looks already sportier than the previous generation. Length, 4,71 meter, 4,73 meter for the Audi, 4,75 meter for the Mercedes or 185 inches, 186 inches for the Audi, 180. 87 inches for the Mercedes so yeah but they all are somewhat close. Design-wise the Mercedes has the most roundish design you can see most sensual design I would say and technology advantage rear axle steering so the rear axle option of course can go in the opposite direction than the front wheels gives you a massive advantage when parking in and out and also when doing a u-turn for example however the suspension is not adaptive, but it has kind of, you know, like this selective frequency damping that although it's not actively adaptive, it still acts like it is adaptive. And we'll see in the driving part how the comfort plays out there. Mercedes, BMW, Audi all come with 18-inch wheels here today. And here the BMW with this M Sport package and also the extended shadow line. We've seen the dark front grille. Audi A4 here in the S line and then also optional with blacked out here everything. Isn't it interesting how they all set a different design accentuation also here in the rear? They are somewhat all different, aren't they? The key fobs, very interesting in the comparison. The Mercedes one feels heaviest and most premium, but it's also the thickest then in this case. Maybe the Audi is the solution in between. Hmm, which one would you take? Door closing sound tests. BMW and Mercedes. Seats and seating position here in the C-Class. First of all, materials. This one here is animal skin pack. However, there are a lot of Artico or Ambitex choice available. So full leather red in different colors. And in Germany, you can also get a microfiber inset. The UK with the C-Class is restricted to animal skin, sadly. The position itself here is actually quite okay. I would say that the ergonomics for tall people is not that good. That could be a little bit better here, especially because they set this comfort focus actually. Interior cockpit overview of the C-Class with this vertical layout here of the huge screen. Temperature control is integrated right here. It also has this nice effect then with the air vents, for example. These are also a massive design element here and Really beautiful with the mad wood. Inside of the doors with the BMW, also soft touch materials here everywhere. And also the window controls here, everything looks like nice build quality. Seats here, the animal skin pack for the three series. However, base would be now perforated sensor tech and they are also a little bit softer than. Seating position here in the three series. I have to say the seats are kind of small, at least for tall people. And well, from the headroom, it's no problem, but you know, here this area, you know, like this hip area and so on. So I feel that ergonomic seating comfort wise, not super happy with that. The Audi is definitely better. BMW 3 Series here since the facelift screen, you have this one unit curved design, 12.3 on the left, 14.9 on the right. And the manual AC unit is gone for that. It looks cleaner. But of course, you have more controls in the screen. However, somewhat like a hybrid because here on the steering wheel, we still have manual buttons also for the AECC and so on. So the BMW here positions itself from the user interface 
between the Audi and the Mercedes. You know, you have the BMW OS8 in, of course, visual, visualization wise, it's really impressive. The climate unit then here in the lower part, at least it always stays in one area as well. Audi interior inside of the doors, nice microfiber right here. And also a microfiber seat, at least on the inside, available in Germany and in the UK, or a full fabric as base seat. US, sadly, only an on the skin. Seating position in the Audi, to me, is the best because the seats are most suitable to 1 meters 89 or 6 or 2. <laughs> Headroom, no problem, but I think they have best shoulder support. They are the widest, actually, so they enclose me the best, take pressure off the lower back area and so on. Interior overview of the Audi A4, also a very clean layout with my favorite AC unit with clicking sounds <laughs> and then also here this brushed aluminum look for example since the facelift a 10 inch touchscreen the pre-facelift had no touchscreen then still the MMI knob in the lower part steering wheel is not too small but also like heated steering wheel button directly on steering wheel this is the theme of the Audi A4 it's more this analog thing where you can still control more things yourself directly. Well, it's all closed for them here in the rear. Headroom is no problem in the A4, but barely fits. But then also here, the knees in this recess, yes, but yeah, also very close here on the rear bench. You have the same nice microfiber and the seating cupboard itself is also good. Rear seating here of the C-Class. Well, legroom is limited. I would need to put the seat a little bit higher that the recess here fits better. Other than that, it's kind of cramped also here at the shoulder area. But the comfort itself is actually quite decent. In the rear here, similar headroom also works, but once again, legroom closed. So when you have me as a tall driver in the front, it always gets closed in the rear. And now, the trunk comparison. Oh. Yeah, my master has taught me very well to use the force. <laughs> and then here, the trunk of the A4, 460 liters officially. The BMW officially has the biggest liter figure at 500 liters. But then you have this step here, raising towards the seats. The dimensions are all more or less the same, like a meter of 40 inches in width, meter of 40 inches in length. And the Mercedes here, somewhat in between, I would say, also with some space here. And then it gets a little bit narrower towards the wheel arches. So all more or less comparable. Engine today, the most bought, most used ones, two liter four cylinders each. Audi and BMW also offer six cylinders. The C-Class now all about four cylinders. Like on the Thomas's Comparison Driving Lounge, Mercedes C-Class, C300 4Matic, 40 kilometers an hour, German Autobahn. Let's go. And 200 kilometers an hour, there we go. It's actually well done. So the official figure is about six seconds for the C300 formatic from zero to 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. Yeah, actually quite smooth and also here at higher speeds. Good noise insulation, it's not loud at all indeed. Lane changes here, car's not shaking up too much. This is here a selective damping, that means it does not change according to the driving mode, but it constantly is somewhat adaptive in a way that it reacts on the different amplitudes you know, of the bumps. So the reason for that is they don't want to make an active adaptive system, basically to save money. But at the same time, when there are bumps in the road, it's comfortable, but when there's no bumps, it's basically stiff that you have more stability and that works very well and you've seen it here when we're on the motorway high speed wasn't shaking up too much so really happy with the suspension here although we didn't change anything from that um, <laughs> you really go left and right and so on it doesn't give you the sportiest appearance but still it's not shaking up too much so i think i found a very good compromise this is equipped here with the rear axle steering option and that one automatically adds the sportier 
suspension. So there are two suspension, the base one and the sport suspension. And when you go for the rear axle steering, it automatically adds the sport, steer, uh, sport suspension that is a little bit lower, 50 millimeters. Um, but it doesn't feel uncomfortable. 18 inch wheels here with winter tires, so it's also a good choice. And here, this is also one of the advantages of the C-Class. Some might not like it. I found it very spectacular. Look at that ambient lighting. It's just awesome. And of course, you have this effect when you put it warmer or colder, that it also changes then according to the temperature. And now, edge corner run. Now we are in this moment where the rear axis steering helps. Yeah really feel how the rear of the car is coming around a little bit. Maximum of 2.5 degrees, that's really, really cool. And once again, this new generation of the C-Class with the Sport here, steering. So look here, really easy, nice. Rear wheel bias also of that all-wheel drive. So this is a rear wheel driven platform, so we also have a nice, yeah, coming out of the corners, very smooth also. No oversteering, no understeering, very good balance and also fun as for suspension. Engine sometimes feels a little bit, um, let's say, yeah, not that calm, you know what I mean? I think that's a little bit better with the BMW. And we're also looking forward to how that one will play out with the Audi. But here, definitely fun in the car. It's not too aggressive, very calm and collected at the same time. So yes, definitely sportier than before. At the same time, they are remaining this comfort and technology focus in driving. So this new generation C-Glass already set the bar quite high for the other two here in that driving part. Now to the BMW 330i, we put it to the Sport mode. We can also go even Sport Plus, 40 km an hour. Let's go. pretty loud in here so I feel that this one is louder than, than the two others at higher speeds and suspension is doing a great job it's actually the stiffest one in the test I feel yeah you feel it especially when you're going over these bumps in a very fast way so the BMW to me already right now seems to be the sportiest proposition in this test indeed so suspension laid out on the stiffest tone, the sportiest engine sound, especially with the sound amplification here in the sport mode. At the same time, the engine feels kind of most refined. That's interesting, although the Audi is a little bit quicker. However, the steering here, yeah, I have been criticizing that sometimes already with the 3 Series, it feels a little bit vague. Here in the sport mode is better, actually. But especially when you are in the normal comfort mode, for example, then it's just really loose, especially in this area. Here to the side, it gets better, but it feels kind of artificial. And I think the 3 Series, told it last time as well, 3 Series should be the benchmark for a natural steering with BMW. But it is the worst in the brand lineup, and I still don't get it. A BMW X5, for example, has a better steering feel than the BMW 3 Series, and that can't be. Yeah, it's not that it would be super bad or something, just I would have very high standards for the 3 Series as for the um, steering input. Really nice, since the facelift here, and cool visualizations. Of course, it kind of communicates between both worlds. I already have that feeling in the interior, now also in driving. The Audi most conservative cockpit layout, you feel more analog also while driving, feel most in control of all the different controls. The BMW in between, a mix of analog and digital, and the Mercedes goes full digital. These are the three different things they have basically. All right, now in these winding corners, and steering wheel not good. Whoa, that was some slip, interesting. So in the Sport Plus mode, more slip is allowed, but then again, also the ESP is ruling, also when you have too much slip. 
you can of course also deactivate these systems, but I don't do it here on public roads. Yeah, it's really a little bit slippery indeed in the Sport Plus mode, so let me just go to the normal Sport mode. Maybe that's better then with a little less slip. Wow, interesting. Didn't expect that. So in here, yeah, out of the corners when you have enough traction, that's really cool then indeed. Again, the steering feel is not the best, but the vehicle itself conveys the most aggressive and, you know, let's drive feeling. So also chassis-wise and how we can get out of the corners with such a rear-wheel bias always. Of course, either in the pure rear-wheel drive version or then still with the rear-wheel bias also when you have the all-wheel drive version. And now to the Audi A4. We put to the dynamic mode here, 265 horsepower. Also puts it to the S shifting mode. And this one's supposed to be the quickest of the three. Let's see, let's let this other car pass and then we'll start from 40 kilometers an hour and accelerate it out. All right, ready? Let's go. Twenty, one fifty, one sixty. Have to cancel it now for safety reasons. This Q8 in front of us blocked us. Here we go now. Not from one thirty. One sixty. Really has a good punch still. Wow. And now two hundred kilometers an hour. One hundred twenty-five miles an hour and really stable here also. Great job from that adaptive suspension in the sports mode, giving me more feedback. Wow, this feels really, everything feels like, kind of like integrated. You feel very much connected to the vehicle. That is great actually. Wow, super interesting. Um, yeah, and indeed it is a little bit quicker. It's not that the, like, Engine-wise, the best feeling gives you the BMW engine. Maybe also because of the sound they give on the inside or something. The BMW engine feels at least most refined, but definitely here the Audi one is the quickest. Yeah, super interesting. Of course, when you're accelerating straight out, you don't really feel a big effect of this thing that this one here in the Audi is not a rear-wheel drive engine. They just, just have that for the three-liter, six-cylinder petrol and diesel, where you have the standard Quattro Overdrive 40-60 split. Here in the two-liter engines, this Quattro Ultra, where you have predominantly front-wheel drive and on-demand also rear-wheel drive. Here, by the way, also in the tunnel, you see difference then to the Mercedes, where everything is <laughs> shining all over the place with the ambient lighting. And here, rather subtle drawn back, which is the basic theme of this interior, that everything is more subtle and more conservative indeed. All right, let's pull it here into the corners. Also suspension here. This is in a stiffer mode, but then the road gets very rough. Yeah, I, I think this time I feel that the C-Class just gives more comfort on uneven roads. And here now accelerating out. You know, the steering wheel doesn't get too light, so there's no significant understeering or something. But you do feel a little bit that it's front wheel bias. Let's see here once more again. Yeah, a little bit, but actually not too much. So I think although they don't have the rear wheel driven platform, yeah, a little bit. So you feel that, that the front wheels are pulling a little bit more in comparison to the others. Um, so it is more fun with the rear-wheel driven platforms accelerating out. However, as for the general agility feeling, like left and right, the driving dynamics from the vehicle, the A4 is also fantastic. And now then with the steering input, that is really cool once again. It's a lot of fun and also again, it again plays a role that you feel so much integrated in the vehicle. So. Yeah, I mean, driving fun-wise, I think the most ideal thing would be when you would have the A4 handling with 
the drivetrain of the C-Class or the BMW or something, you know? So, um, yeah, and there you see where, where we might have a problem in concisely deciding. They all have so much to offer in the individual factors. Hmm. So what we're going to do now? Wow, super interesting to directly drive all of these three cars after each other. First of all, all three of them are very elaborated, are definitely awesome vehicles, no doubt about that. What do they have in common? The consumption for these engines here, the two liter four cylinders with all wheel drive each, almost the same, all around nine liters on one kilometer, so 26 mpg US, 31 mpg UK. But what are the differences? The A4 definitely has a sporty look. On the interior, the unique feature is that it has the most direct, most conservative user interface. To me, also still easiest to control, like an 80s analog stereo, where you also have a sound feedback and so on. And at the same time, you also have, to me, the best seating comfort, actually, especially for tall people. Then again, in driving, you don't have a real -world bias with this 2.0-liter 4-cylinder engine. That might be one of the disadvantages, actually. But still, a very agile driving feeling, quite silent also on the Autobahn, and surprisingly also with the quickest acceleration figure. The BMW actually tells me most like, hey, I want to be driven, let's have fun. It has some kind of the most aggressive driving characteristics, also most slip at the rear axle and so on. So this one more the driver's focused car. The Audi tries to go in this balance, you know, between sportiness and comfort. The BMW most goes in the sport direction. The suspension, even when you have the adaptive one, is the stiffest in the test. So everything's set on the sporty note with the BMW. And when you think about the brand values, that kind of also fits. So really, it's so interesting what these cars are trying to tell us. The Audi Audi tells us, I want to combine sportiness and comfort. The BMW says, sportiness, let's go. Also from the exterior and so on. Seating comfort to me, sadly, the least comfortable from the seat ergonomics. However, they offer nice perforated sensor tech material as for the surface. When we think about the Mercedes, you have a very stylish exterior, definitely, no matter if Avantgarde or AMG line. The interior is the most digital one, whereas the BMW tries to communicate between both worlds, is like a combination of analog and digital with this facelift, this new dash and so on. The Mercedes goes all the way digital, most controls then in the screen and so on. And it is a mo the most impressive car in this test, definitely. Infotainment system and also the ambient lighting looks so cool. It has the most most features that you can show off to your friends. That's also very interesting, isn't it? And I really love to drive with this ambient lighting in the night, for example. Interesting is that it doesn't have a real adaptive suspension. However, the suspension is so cool, it kind of gives you this floating effect. It does share parts with the Mercedes S-Class and in indeed feels like driving a small S-Class. So the C-Class goes more in this elaborate, more comfortable position and that also fits the brand core image indeed. The downside is of course that it might be a little bit more complicated as for the user interface. Then again, this high-tech vehicle approach, for example, this one offers the rear axle steering, which helps so much when parking in and out and being more agile, U-turning and so on. So the C-Class is the technology king here of this review. Comfort-wise, I would say from the seating comfort between the two ones. Yeah, so it is really hard to pick a concise winner. The thing is, they all have their unique position. The Audi, to me, the unique position straightforward user interface, comfort and sportiness combined, and to me also most comfortable as for the seating. The BMW, kind of like the, the sports king, I would say, of this review, but then with some compromises to the comfort. And the Mercedes, the technology king here in this review. And of course, with this, you know, most showing off effect. And now the question is, which one of these aspects is most important to you? So I would not really say that one is better than the other one. The question is really what is the focus? And th let's say with the C-Class, at first, um, and also when I did the first comparison test, I was a little bit more skeptical, but the longer you drive it, the more you like it and the more you get used to the features which were a little bit more complicated at first and so on, and the more you enjoy also this suspension which is giving you this floating feeling. 
The BMW is really when you want this sporty non-compromise, I would say. <sighs> but, I mean, when I have to decide right now, it's really, really tough. So, to me, there is no clear winner. All of them have their special features. Um, to me, the thing is that the seating comfort is extremely important. That's what I really appreciate about the A4. But I was also surprised by the Mercedes. The steering input together with the rear axle steering was also the best in the test done here. So, hmm. Wait, before you decide, let's talk about pricing as well. So they all, of course, also come kind of close and it depends on the trims and what extra equipment you put in there. But when we take these concise test vehicles here for today, interesting thing is 70,000 euros, 80,000 euros, 70,000 euros. Usually the Mercedes are most expensive, but although they have like rear axle steering inside and so on, the BMW has some of most equipment from the extra prices and is indeed way more expensive. So again, it depends on the options list, but as they stand here right now, would you have guessed that this one is the most expensive one? So I would actually decide between the Mercedes and the Audi, and I really enjoy the Mercedes and also the ambient lighting and the technology, but I think due to the seat and comfort and the straightforward user interface, I would personally lean towards the Audi, but again, that's not that it's the better vehicle. It's just that my personal preference, it is more important to have the best seat and comfort and the overall best compromise of comfort and sportiness. But the more I have been driving the C-Class, it also gave me, hey, maybe I should then go for the C-Class. So really complicated. This is my very, very close call for today. It's just that the BMW is actually in this segment here, not the one I would pick here today. That's to me actually pretty sure. In other segments, for example, recently we had the result where the BMW was the clear winner. So you see these premium manufacturers here in Germany, they come so close that also the comparison results are also always very, very close. What do you think? Tell me your choice and why in the comments and see you at more of our comparison reviews.